Hello and welcome to Open Tierra. Today we're taking a look at the Central African Republic. Did you know that the country's history includes a leader who styled himself as an emperor, conducting grand ceremonies and ruling with an iron fist? Join us to find out more about this bizarre yet captivating chapter in the Central African Republic's history, where a leader's self-proclaimed empire clashed with reality in ways that will astonish you. Stay tuned to unravel the intriguing tale behind this emperor's reign. The Central African Republic is a landlocked country located in Central Africa. It has a total land area of about 240,000 square miles, which equals roughly the size of France and Belgium combined. Most of the territory consists of flat or rolling terrain at a high altitude, ranging from around 1,600 to 5,900 feet above sea level. On the western border with Cameroon, you'll find the Adamawa Plateau stretching through the Central Central African Republic. Toward the southeast lies the Ubangi River, a major tributary of the Congo River system. This river valley features lush rainforest terrain in an area known as the Zanga Sanga Special Reserve. It supports unique biodiversity, including forest elephants and lowland gorillas. To the northeast, the country extends into the northern savanna and Sahel regions, transitioning into the Sahara desert landscape. Despite being landlocked, the nation's rivers and natural resources support most economic activities, including agriculture, timber, and more recently, diamond mining. The earliest inhabitants of the region were hunter-gatherers. During the 7th century CE, organized societies began forming, including the Zander Kingdom. These groups engaged in agriculture and primitive metalwork. In the 16th century, raiders from Sudan began invading, capturing slaves and disrupting societies. This turbulence continued into the late 19th century as Arabic-speaking groups fought to control territory. European merchants also became active in the region in the 1800s. In the 1880s, the French took control of the area, naming it Ubangi Shari and ruling it as part of French Equatorial Africa. The French promoted Christianity and the French language while suppressing local customs. Cotton and other crops were exported out of the region to benefit the colonial power. Tensions simmered under decades of inequality and exploitation. During the 1950s, political movements against colonial rule began emerging in Ubangi Shari, galvanized by trends across Africa. Local leaders began demanding more autonomy and freedom from the French. This grew into a coordinated independence movement, gaining momentum under key figures like Barthélemy Boganda. In 1958, France agreed to give the Central African Republic autonomy within the French community, a transitional status before full sovereignty. This came after prolonged negotiations as local leaders asserted the region's right to self-governance and protested heavy-handed French policies. The territory then gained full independence two years later, on August 13, 1960. A new constitution was ratified and Boganda was elected as the first prime minister. However, he died suddenly in 1959, leaving the fledgling nation without strong leadership. The transition to independence was therefore turbulent as political factions competed to fill the power vacuum. The inexperienced government also faced challenges in establishing effective institutions and developing the impoverished economy. The decades following independence saw the Central African Republic plagued by political upheaval, authoritarian rule and horrific violence. This bleak legacy was epitomized by Jean Bédel Bocassa, who seized power in a 1966 coup d'état and instituted one of Africa's most bizarre and brutal dictatorships, 
Bokassa crowned himself emperor, spending lavish sums on Napoleonic ceremonies while violently suppressing all opposition to his rule. Tales are told of his shocking cruelties, including claims that he participated in cannibalizing enemies. Although the veracity is debated, nonetheless, his regime was marked by well-documented killings, torture, and exploitation until French paratroopers intervened to overthrow him in 1979's Operation Barracuda. Yet there was no long-term stability even after Bokassa, with presidents such as Anger Felix Patasse meeting their own violent ends through coups and mutinies. Ongoing clashes between Muslim rebel groups and Christian anti-Balaka militias ravaged the countryside, displacing hundreds of thousands amid horrific human rights abuses committed by both sides. Efforts have been made more recently to stabilize the country, including democratic elections in 2016. However, the Central African Republic continues to face serious challenges from political volatility and conflict between rebel groups. Nonetheless, many maintain hope that peaceful and prosperous days may lie ahead. The Central African Republic is home to a diverse population consisting of around 4.6 million people as of 2016. More than 80 ethnic groups are estimated to live in the Central African Republic. The three largest groups are the Baya, Bandia and Manjia, together comprising more than 50% of the population. Other major groups include the Sara people in the south, the Mboum in the northwest, and nomadic Mbororo herders found across the north. There are also various smaller hunter-gatherer groups, such as the Acre people, living in forested regions. About 80-90% of the Central African population is Christian, primarily Protestant, along with some Roman Catholics. An estimated 10-20% practice indigenous beliefs, blending animism and witchcraft traditions. Islam has a small but growing representation as well in areas such as the Northeast. The official languages are French and Sango. Sango emerged in the 19th century as the common language for trade between various ethnic groups. Alongside the two official languages, about 50 dialects from the Niger-Congo language family are spoken across the Central African Republic. Central African Republic has a small economy that is one of the least developed globally, with the vast majority involved in non-industrial agriculture. However, the country is rich in natural resources including diamonds, gold, uranium and timber. Political instability has hampered economic progress for decades. About 60% of the Central African Republic's workforce engages in subsistence farming of staple crops like cassava, peanuts and sorghum. Most agriculture is done manually without machinery. Landlocked Central African Republic faces high transportation costs to export what crops they do produce. Agricultural productivity remains extremely low overall to support domestic food needs. They have extensive natural resources, including high-grade uranium, gold, oil, diamonds, and timber. The diamond sector specifically helped drive high economic growth rates after independence. But mismanagement and corruption have blocked most mining and only about 8% of suitable agricultural land sees use. The Central African Republic has a rich cultural heritage that incorporates both local tribal traditions as well as influences from outside groups that have migrated or traded in the region over the centuries. This blending is reflected in the country's artistic and cultural institutions. Traditional music uses instruments like drums, harps, xylophones and more to create polyrhythmic sounds for ceremonies and celebrations. Folk tales and legends are kept alive through music and dance performances that convey cultural knowledge across generations. Sculpture and wood carving feature prominently in artisan works, as in 
the carved masks used in ritual dramas. Intricate weaving and fabrics represent other traditional crafts, while modern painters incorporate Afro-European techniques and themes by local training institutes. The Boganda National Museum in the capital, Bangui, preserves archaeological artifacts and promotes cultural research on the ethnic histories of groups like the Aka people. The National Arts and Crafts Centre sponsors trade fairs and conferences to bolster arts education. Since independence, community arts centres have increased access to theatre, libraries, galleries and cinema for both urban and rural populations to participate in cultural development. So while still a developing country facing challenges, vibrant artistic creativity and resilient cultural institutions persevere in the Central African Republic. Tradition remains interwoven with modern life. From nutty stews to spicy skewers, Central African Republic, cooking blends varied flavors into hearty comfort foods. We'll highlight some dishes you should try to get a true taste of Central African Republic traditions. First up, Igusi soup. This savory soup features a thick, creamy texture from ground Igusi seeds from melon and gourd plants. Tomatoes, onions, chilies and palm oil round out the simple but tasty peanut-colored broth. Igusi soup is usually served over rice with meat or fish. Another Central African Republic specialty is chichinga, flavorful grilled skewers akin to kebabs or shish kebabs. Pork, beef, chicken or fish get seasoned with a dry rub called suya, made from chilies, peanuts and spices. Chichinga makes for perfect street food, served alongside rice or fried plantains. For a more stew-like meal, try mwamba chicken, also called mwamba de galinha. This dish sees chicken pieces simmered into a rich tomato-based sauce containing palm oil, pumpkin, garlic and lemon. Mwamba chicken is generally enjoyed over a carb-like rice or yuca. Up next, kanda ti nima, a unique peanut and okra take on meatballs. Minced beef gets rolled into bite-sized balls, then braised in a thick peanut butter sauce thickened with okra vegetable slime. This hearty dish goes well with bread or fufu to sop up the nutty gravy. If you enjoyed this video on the Central African Republic, you'll love this next video.